Anyway, we're taking a closer look this morning at a sweeping report on the health effects of marijuana. The National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine published the results yesterday. The panel looked at medical and recreational use and examined more than 10,000 studies. Now, this is the most comprehensive review since 1999, well before attitudes on the drug evolved. And today, 29 states and the District of Columbia allow some form of legal marijuana. Our Dr. John LaPook is here. He joins us at the table. Welcome, Good Dr. Morning, LaPook. Gail. So there are 395 pages to the report. I can say you're the only one at the table that's read all 395. <laughs> this is true. We're glad you did that because now you can share. What'd you learn? What'd you see? Well, in terms of, of treatment, there's pretty solid evidence that can be helpful in alleviating uh, chronic pain in adults, nausea from chemotherapy, and then spasticity or muscle spasm in people with multiple sclerosis. They also looked at a whole bunch of other things where there wasn't quite adequate research. They said we need more research for things like epilepsy, you know, PTSD, uh, even anxiety. Were you surprised that there are some clear health benefits from marijuana? Not at all. This drug, you know, cannabis works on a system in our body called the endocannabinoid system, which is this amazing system that we're just starting to scratch the surface of. It's important for all sorts of things, pain, mood, anxiety, mm -hmm. um, even immune function, reproductive function, uh, blood vessel, heart. I mean, we're just figuring out. This is pharmacologically active, and uh, it's not surprising to me at all that you can manipulate the system and get some benefits. But it also lays out the risks. Right. Yeah. Right? This are there are risks. And, um, you know, I spoke to two of the authors yesterday, and they pointed out it's so hard to figure out exactly what the risks are because a lot of this is based on self-reporting. There's a hundred, more than a hundred different uh, cannabinoid chemicals that are in cannabis, and people take it all sorts of different ways. But the bottom line was they were most concerned, or one of the large areas of concern was with adolescence, right? Mm -hmm. The earlier you start using it, the greater the concern but for it, abuse. It, it, I'm asking this. Is it because of the effect it has on your body or because... It's viewed in some cases as a starter drug, so you end up somewhere else in a much more severe drug. Yeah, this is a million dollar question, and of course the problem is figuring out, is it people who have that type of personality, they would have gone on anyway, or is it that this is somehow a gateway to it? And again, one of the problems is this all the self-reporting, we don't know exactly what people are taking, there's different forms, uh, different ways of taking it, and it's hard to do the science. I remember your 60 Minutes report, you went to Colorado, spent a lot of time there looking at recreational drug use. What do you think Colorado has learned that others other states need to know? I, I think it's terrific what they're doing there in terms of gathering statistics, first of all, to find out, you know, where are you at the beginning? They say the other states should do that before they legalize and then find out what's happening after legalization. Yeah. Is there, are there more problems? But very specifically things like there were problems with edibles. So some of these edibles looked like little like gummy brownies. bears. Little gummy, yeah, little brownie, gummy bears for kids, so they change it so it doesn't look like uh, candy. And then brownies, people have to understand, you eat a brownie, it may take a couple of hours to get absorbed. So you say, oh, I'm fine, have another brownie and then you a couple hours later it kicks in you go out driving and there's a big problem thank you John the pook